right, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about monopolistic competition. It's the last of the market structures that we want to take a look at, and the information is in your book on the chapters indicated on that first slide. Uh, and our goal today is to kind of understand how price and quantity are determined when we work in monopolistic competition and look at some of the characteristics of monopolistic competition and how it is similar to and different from monopoly and perfect competition and talk a little bit about how monopolistic competition can lead to inefficiencies in the market. So first, what is monopolistic competition? Uh, it is a market structure in which there are many firms. So we're back away from few to many, where no one firm can uh, have an impact on, uh, on the market on its own. Um, each firm will be selling a different product, a differentiated product. So it's not like perfect competition where it's one product. We have lots of very close substitutes. Um, there is free entry and exit within the industry. The firms have um, the ability to set prices based on margin revenue equaling marginal cost, um, much like a monopolist. And um, there are there are very few barriers to entry, and there is no real chance for collusion because there are so many firms um, in the industry, it's virtually impossible for them to work together. Some examples of uh, monopolistic competition uh, might be uh, toothpaste. There are so many different types of toothpaste out there. Um, there's uh, clothes and the very uh, wide variety of retailers out there that are making clothes. Um, food courts at, at the mall might be an example, or restaurants in general, are all examples of monopolistic competition. Uh, differentiated products with lots and lots of different firms competing in it. When it comes to graphing monopolistic competition, in many regards, it's very similar to monopoly. There's going to be a downward sloping demand curve that is generally more elastic than in a monopoly because of the fact that there are uh, close substitutes to the product. Firms are going to have the ability to control their prices. That is that um, the maximizing quantity will be where marginal revenue equals marginal cost, but there is a demand price that is higher than that that uh, will be charged. And, uh, and so we're still going to follow through with the, the optimum output rule. So if we're looking at it in the short run, we would see a monopolistic competition uh, market very similar to a monopoly with average total cost, marginal cost, demand and marginal revenue curves all looking exactly the same. In this situation, in uh, part A, we would see that the optimal output is where marginal revenue equals marginal cost at QP, and that there's a demand price all the way up, um, which is marked as P, price P. So then we have a profit here because price is greater than average total cost. So it's just like uh, a monopoly. And if you look at B, um, in this case, it's a loss because the m revenue or the profit maximizing quantity where marginal revenue equals marginal cost uh, is at a point where the quantity is um, such that the price that people pay is less than average total cost and so that would be a loss. So from a graphing standpoint not much different than what you already know. One thing that is different from a monopoly is that in the long run with a monopoly because there is only one firm economic profits tend to um, stay and exist throughout the long term. But with monopolistic competition, there are lots and lots of firms um, out there, and there's entry and exit into the market. And so if there is an economic profit to be had in the industry, that would indicate that more firms would want to enter. If more firms want to enter into the market, when we have a change to our graph. Instead of our demand and marginal revenue curves remaining where they're at, they shift to the left. That is that because there are more competitors and more goods out there, the demand for your specific good shrinks as there are more options available to people. So as firms enter into a monopolistically competitive market, the demand for any individual firm along with its marginal revenue curve tend to shift to the left as opposed to where there's a, a market where there's a loss, in which case as firms leave the industry, the consumer demand for any one good tends to increase or shift to the right because there are now fewer available substitutes from which to pick from. And so as we look at the final long run, um, we end up with a situation very similar to perfect competition in which there is no economic profit in the long run. That in fact, demand will shift uh, either right or left depending on whether firms are exiting or entering the market until we get to a point at which the profit maximizing price 
is tangent to the average total cost curve, and that's where we will find long-run equilibrium. So in monopolistic competition, there is no long-run economic profit because of the entry and exit of firms into the industry. So if we want to look at monopolistic competition and compare it to what we know when it comes to monopoly and perfect competition, we could say that both monopolistic competition and perfect competition have a long-run equilibrium in which price is equal to average total cost, which tells us also that in the long run there is no economic profit or there are normal profits for both perfect competitors and monopolistically competitive firms. We know that the optimal output rule of marginal revenue equals marginal cost is uh, the same for both market structures. We know there are many firms in both market structures and that there is free entry and exit. So in those regards, monopolistic competition is very much like perfect competition. We can also say, though, that it's like a monopoly in the sense that they both follow the optimum output rule and that in both cases, firms have control over their price, that their price is greater than their marginal cost because of the downward sloping demand curve that both uh, types of market structures face. Graphically, we could kind of compare the long-run equilibriums of perfect competition with that of mono monopolistic competition by looking at side-by-side -side graphs. On the left, we've got long-run equilibrium and perfect competition, where demand is horizontal. It's equal to marginal revenue. It, it will be tangent to the average total cost curve at its minimum point, which is where marginal cost crosses through it. And so our, our profit-maximizing level of output would be at QPC. With monopolistic competition, we have downward sloping demand curve and downward sloping marginal revenue curve. And so with the same average total cost curve, we find that a monopolistically competitive firm will produce at QMC and at the higher price, price MC. And when we compare these two graphs, there are some generalities that we can make. Uh, one is that there are higher prices in monopolistic competition than there are in perfect competition. We can also say that they produce less output in monopolistic competition than they do in perfect competition. And there's also this concept called excess capacity in monopolistic competition. There are um, there is more production that could be made that would lower average total costs. So we're not being the most efficient in our production. Um, but because of the fact that there's a downward sloping demand curve, the profit maximizing level of output is um, less than our essentially our full capacity. And so we're, we're producing less than we could. If we go back to the long run graphs, we could say that basically the minimum cost output, the difference between the minimum cost output and our quantity and monopolistic competition, this area here is what we would call excess capacity. It's the production we could have that would help lower our average total costs, but because of the way the market is structured, um, there's no incentive for us to produce that quantity. So is the long run for monopolistic competition a good thing or a bad thing? Well, um, it's bad in the sense that there is some inefficiency that does exist. There are uh, trades that would have been made in perfect competition that are not being made now, and so there is dead weight loss that's created price is greater than marginal cost, and so we are left uh, with some trades that people would have wanted to make but cannot. However, there are some benefits to this, um, this market structure. So even though there is dead weight loss, we do see um, that there is some variety for consumers. There is some convenience created um, because people are able to access something that they want. And so um, there are some, some positives to this. Now, firms within a monopolistic, uh, monopolistic competitive market do attempt to differentiate their products in some way in order to compete against each other. Uh, typically, differentiation is based on either the style or type of the good, uh, the location of the, uh, the store where you can purchase the good, or the quality um, of the good. Differentiation based on style or type would be like going to the food court and saying, well, the good is food, but what style or type am I interested in? Do I want hamburgers? Do I want Mexican? Do I want Chinese? Um, so the, the style or type of restaurant would be one way to differentiate yourself from other competitors who are all selling this basic commodity known as food. Uh, location just could be what's more convenient for people to get to. You know, if I have a gas station, do I 
where do I place it? Which corner can I get the most business in? Which which one is more uh, accessible from all directions? And if there's one with an island um, that separates it from uh, one side of the highway versus another side where there is no island, then obviously I might want the, the side that's more convenient as a way to differentiate my store from somebody else's. And as far as quality goes, I mean, whatever, uh, you know, when you look at clothes and you, you look at uh, a Kmart, quality pair of jeans versus um, a pair of jeans you could buy at Neiman Marcus. Some people are going to want a higher quality than others, and so that helps to kind of differentiate yourself and, and helps you to establish a, a market demand for your good. Even with all this differentiation, it's important to recognize that uh, goods with differentiated, or industries with differentiated goods still have competition among sellers. There's still a lot of different firms trying to sell the same category of good, and that with that uh, differentiation comes uh, a diversity of products which many people find valuable because it helps people to meet their individual and unique needs. Now how do you communicate forms of differentiation with your customers? One is through advertising which we see constantly on television, newspapers, radio, uh, and the other is the use of name brands. Some way to, to indicate to people um, that your good has a certain level of quality um, and a certain style simply by the name. One question you may ask yourself, though, is does advertising really make a difference? I mean, is it really that important? Um, why does differentiation work? Um, and the main reason is because people aren't as rational as we may think. People are swayed by um, tastes and fads and what other people are doing. And so to the extent that companies in a monopolistically competitive uh, market structure or even oligopoly are able to create the perception of a of a difference in people's minds, even if the difference is not actually significant, uh, gives them some market control and market share that they might not otherwise have. Um, and so people's purchase decisions are not always built on economic thinking. Um, and because of that, firms find advertising and brand name recognition and the, the, the creation of a brand to be beneficial. Advertising um, is another great way of differentiating and it's helpful in many regards because even though it's not necessarily telling us anything substantive about the product, it does help us to sort through the many options that we have. In a monopolistically competitive industry with many, many firms, we need to kind of sort through all of the different firms that we could pick from and advertising helps consumers make that kind of sorting. And then also intellectually, some people like advertising because they look at things like celebrity endorsers and it helps tell them something about quality because presumably if a celebrity is going to endorse a good, it must be of a higher quality than um, some other good. Otherwise, they wouldn't be endorsing it. And so advertising is a way that monopolistically competitive uh, firms and oligopolies can help uh, shape demand and help them to control more of their price. Um, than they might otherwise have, and certainly more than they would have in perfect competition, where advertising would be pointless since everyone's good is exactly the same. We'll do some more practice on perfect competition or monopolistically competitive firms and monopolistic competition when you come into class, and I'll see you then. Bye.